Hello, I'm Paul Michael Glazer, and you are watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to actress Julie Newmar. Yep, Julie Newmar, the original TV Catwoman, the object of cross-dresser affection into Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar, and the author of The Conscious Catwoman Explores Life on Earth. Explains. 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 Yeah, I tell you all about it. Okay. All right, folks. <laughs> so stick around and please don't trip on your own tongue leaving the studio. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of Eartha Kid fans whose argument holds no, ca no catnip here in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Is it hot there? It's very hot, very humid, very sticky. It's perfect here. <laughs> I didn't know I would one day be talking to actress Julie Newmar when I left the showing of The Dark Knight Rises a few months ago. Then I was thinking about Anne Hathaway and that she was the best thing about that film and that she might just be the best Catwoman since Julie Newmar. And I wondered what Julie Newmar will say about that. In, fa <laughs> hmm. In fact, this was actually the second time that Miss Newmar had been on the pop, pop culture screen in our household this year. A few months ago, my wife and teen daughter uh, and I caught Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, a classic western in which she starred, although I didn't honestly realize that that was her until today. Now, I was wearing a wig. Oh, that was it. <laughs> and one of the fun elements of being Mr. Meaty is going back in time uh, before encountering a guest to learn more about them. Uh, and often seeing how many times your life has already intersected with their work. So in addition to Seven Brothers, another place I recognized Miss Newmore from was an episode of, of all things, The Monkees, in which she flirts with all four of the boys and demonstrates some sexy and Margaret-like dance moves alongside Mickey Dolenz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I chose the little guy. <laughs> Davy. <laughs> Davy. And Miss, Miss Newmar, who's obviously with us here, also did memorable guest star turns in classic TV shows such as Columbo, Love American Style, Get Smart, Star Trek, F Troop, The Beverly Hillbillies, Twilight Zone, and Route 66. Of course, there was also the unlikely movie that reminded us all of her beauty and star power, 1995's To Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, a road movie in which Patrick Swayze Wesley Snipes and John Leguizamo played drag queens. Of course they did. They were good. They were good. Julie Newmar is here today to talk about her career, of course, but also to bring attention to the California Women's Conference, at which she will be among the celebrity guests at the Long Beach Convention Center on September 23rd and 24th. That's because I wrote a book. That would be it. Well, I think there's a few reasons you're there, but that, that's a good one. The event, which also features uh, actresses Tippi Hedren and Rose Marie, the female cast of The Waltons, uh, attorney Gloria Allred, and singers Melissa Manchester and Helen Reddy, is a forum for the world's most influential voices, hearts, and minds. And you can learn more about it at www.californiawomensconference.com. And Julie Mo Newmar, what a pleasure to have you. Welcome to Mr. Media. Well, thank you. It's nice to be in St. Petersburg. And environs. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you here. So, uh, Anne Hathaway, did you see the movie? I sort of did. I stayed about halfway through, and then it got too noisy. Mm. And I, I went out for ice cream <laughs> and never came back. All right, that's fair enough. What, uh, what did you think of, uh, of Anne's work as a Catwoman? There wasn't enough of her. They, 
the camera didn't do her justice. Really? No, it's all, it's all boy stuff. Oh, I could see that. <laughs> Explosions and craziness and bad behavior and, I don't know, bring back the fun. I'm, I'm with you on that. I didn't need to see uh, New York being threatened with a nuclear explosion. It didn't really do much for me oh, either. A good idea, even though it's probably in some respects true. <laughs> if they were going to blow up something, why not New York? It's okay. bigger. It's taller. Make a bigger noise. More victims. <laughs> now, who am I getting here? Catwoman or Julie? <laughs> Well, it's the modern day. You know, we're into just, just <sighs> explosions. Yeah. Noise. What, what was the last good movie that you saw in a the theater? The movie that I went to see was a French movie about the, <laughs> about the French Revolution. But it was a backstairs story about what happened to the the, the people who worked like in the back of the the White House, let's say, what they were experiencing and feeling. And it was fascinating, and it was the kind of history that I grew up with. I thought that was marvelous. Do you remember the title? Yes. Farewell, My Queen. Oh. Yes. It sounds like an interesting movie. I'm not familiar with it, but it sounds like something to be worth seeking out. Get rid of the noise. All right. All right. I, I want to point out to people that this is the first time you have used Skype, and certainly the first Skype interview. Yes, and that's why I'm wearing a hair, a hat on my hair, because there's this great big bright light up here that would, it just would blinds me. <laughs> it looks kind of strange. And uh, are we... Uh, Tell us what room we're this, in. It looks like an office. This is my office. Oh, shut up. <laughs> You're in my office here. Quiet. Don't call because I'm on Skype. I'll call you back. Show you I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, you've done great. Hey, listen. We I, had... I'm doing this is the first time, and I'm not a book button pusher. Uh, you, did, you did great. You, we got you up and running in Skype in about 15 minutes. You did? I'm amazed. Anyway, this is my office, and the mirror there, that's a mirror. <clears throat> You're looking at my garden, and if you can see that brilliant orange hanging baskets, those are begonias, and I just had a begonia named after me. Now, you know I love gardens. I have a rose named after me, and um, daylily, and um, I have one of the most beautiful gardens, this side of the Mississippi, don't tell anybody. Um, but there are four gardens here, see? And there's four secret gardens there for children. <clears throat> I created them for my son. Mm. Secret gardens are for little people. Yeah. So they kind of, do they crawl in to get to them? Is it that kind of thing? Or? Oh, no, when you're little, you're only yay tall, so everything looks yay big. Oh, I see important and fascinating and magical and um, it's kind of like theater in a way, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of Land of the Giants. You look good on my screen. But I'm not supposed to look at you. I'm supposed to look at this little black box up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let me just say that if Julie Newmore says I look good on her screen, I'm going to take that and run. I might have to end the interview now. <laughs> Yes, and his glasses like this, and you have a blue shirt on. Oh, my. <laughs> and you're in a uh, room with a red wall. Uh, I am. This is my uh, whorehouse red wall. <laughs> oh, isn't it nice we can do these things, whereas you would have to go to big studios, and uh, it's amazing how this world has changed for the better. I agree. More and better, that's what I always say, more and better. I agree. I, I think it's it astonishes me every time I do one of these interviews to be talking to someone like yourself and you're at home and you're comfortable and you're with your own things. I mean, it's it's pretty well, remarkable. Yeah, but but it is intimate. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you were uh, 
kind enough to say something nice about me, which is a good opportunity for me to say something extremely nice about you. Um, I was wa <laughs> I was watching uh, a clip uh, actually on your own website. It's uh, you as uh, from the 60s as Catwoman, Adam West as uh, Batman, and I was reminded of something actually that. Um, that Adam was actually the tallest of all the Batman in all the movies and the TV shows. Yeah, surprisingly. Thank goodness for me, I'm five feet eleven. That's uh, that's what I was wondering, and I noticed that you, uh, probably wearing heels in the shots, but were yes. a, a good inch or two above him. Yeah. Well, I was very. I took the feminine stance, and I sort of, you know, bent my knees a little bit and made myself a little more. What's the word? Available? That's <laughs> the word. No, it's not the word. It's like, <laughs> watch it, boy. But things have changed, haven't they? A little bit. A little uh, bit. I don't know how tall Anne is, but she was wearing those six, seven-inch heels. And then they have this line about, oh, bet you can't run very fast in those heels. <laughs> so there's a close-up of her heel digging it in his backside or something. Right. Nice woman. <laughs> well, I, what you know, and obviously, I have to ask you about about being Catwoman. I, people would 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 kill me if I didn't. But what was it like at that time in the country? The the, the show was a big hit, but um, you're playing this character. We all re, we all think of it now as, oh my God, Julie Newmar is Catwoman. It was just so amazing. What was going on with you and with the country and the show when you did that? Things were better. Things were happier. Things were easier. Things were... We always think of the past as easier. Probably it wasn't. Vietnam was, a, was happening, sort of, on the horizon. And speaking of that, that took us into all these dark Batman sequence follow-up shows. They got darker and darker and darker. And I'm hoping for a time when Catwoman comes back and rules the world. Well, men anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not be sec both sexual and a divinity at the same time? I think that'd be okay. Why not? I mean, men are around. I mean, we know what's good. Yeah. So, if you want to get something you want, you what do you ask for it? With honey or vinegar? Honey, of Do you stab someone? Or do you sort of give them the, you know, a bit of, uh, I'll do this if you do that. <laughs> you haven't lost anything on, on <laughs> you, you're still very convincing when you do that. Well, we it, more and better. All life is more and better in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I notice that when I sit down, going to a restaurant, and I sit down with my girlfriends, they say, waiter comes up and he says, what would you guys want Want to eat? And why did he call me a guy? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you be insulted if you guys went out and Waiter came up and said, what would you gals like to eat? Ah. So language has changed, and but it's more, maybe women are taking on the, well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I think I, I, think I have the idea. Uh, so maybe I should ask you about your book. I'll Tell give that, that later. <laughs> what? Tell me about uh, The Conscious Catwoman. Oh, oh, here it is right here. All right. See? Very nice. Isn't that a good cover? I only have one eye. It's, yeah. <laughs> I got ears. It's not the, it's not the look reflection. Look There's only close. one eye. How about that? If you look real close, you can see the conscious cat woman explains life on Earth. Those are my whiskers. I see. Ah, I see. I like see. that? Okay. Now, wait a minute. Okay. 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 That's me when I was a flamenco dancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. This is fun. I'm having fun with you. Good. Okay. So this I. is when I lived in New York on Beekman Place. All right. 
Beautiful. I have a penthouse there in New York City. Okay, now wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. Here's someone we all like. Uh, Muhammad Ali, the champ. Muhammad Ali. The greatest. Yeah. I don't remember where that was taken, but I'm sure smiling brightly. Yeah, you both look pretty happy. <laughs> mm. Okay, now wait a minute. Let's see. Well, we will give you the old Catwoman. Ah, there she is. Yep. Now, on the phone. Can I'm I, on the phone. Can I ask you something about that photo? What? You knew at the time. I mean, when, when you you put on a costume like that, you had to know how hot that looked, right? I mean, there was you, you, you weren't just thinking, oh, I'm just dressing up as a pirate. I mean, you knew that, that you're in this body, this tight outfit and... You did know that, right? I don't watch men watching me. That would be bizarre. Uh, young girls learn that at a very early age. About when we're in high school or 12 or 13. So, no, it really takes place during your fittings, that you get everything uh, fit right. You have to care about details in life. I think that's what makes the big impact, right? Yeah. Yeah. But did you, I mean, when you were putting that costume on, okay. when you were putting that costume on, was there ever thought in your head, you know, I, th this is either going to be extremely flattering or very unflattering? Hell no. Excuse me for that word. It's okay. I of course it was going to look good. It was made of lurex. It's so stretched. I put, as everyone knows, a gold belt around the hip, so it would give it more of a voluptuous look. It did. And by the way, uh, the, the costume is in the Smithsonian Museum. Oh. Gathering dust. No, go and see it. Is it on? Is it on? Smithsonian's in Washington, D.C., and there are 17 buildings. Is it on display or is it in the collection? You can look at it. Okay. If you go there and get a ticket, you can see it. You can talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. It, it, you know, it's amazing. Um, I don't want to tell you how old I was when I saw that, but I saw Tell me. All right. Always. I would have been six or seven years old. So that's a good age. That's a very good age, and uh, that, you know, that's the best age for a memory about people you're going to grow up and have an attachment to later in life. I have a second book. It's called First Fantasies, and it actually is about well, men would walk up to me on the street and say, "Oh, Miss Newbar, did you know that you were my first turn on?" And I'd ask them how old they were. And they would say six, five, four. And it's interesting how much you know at a young age mm -hmm. about your future self. How did that make you feel when you'd hear that from, from men? Is it, I mean, is it, is it good or is it, does it upset you at all? Hello, what do you think? Is that about the nicest thing you can say? I think you would just... Yummy! Yeah, I, it's wonderful. What 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 better compliment could you get? Uh, brainy. I know I'm brainy, uh, sort of. I'm not as smart as my brother, but come on, we all know what the answer to that one is. Very good. All right. So, uh, w w let me ask you this: What's the uh, what's the strangest thing uh, men have told you over the years about having seen you on screen? Whether it was uh, is Catwoman or it's something else. Uh, um, not strange, but really delectable, delicious. Is a, a, a father walks up to me and he's dragging this kid. And he's about three years old. He's very shy and he's hiding behind his, his father's pants. And and he's and the father's trying to say, "Look, here she is. She's 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 Catwoman. She's famous. You're gonna like it." And, no, he, the boy won't have any. He's shy, you know. And the father keeps trying to convince the boy, but in the background, up walks the grandfather, walks right past the little boy and the father, and leans right into me, and he says, you were the best that I ever saw. 
<laughs> he was very straight, was what I was trying to say. <laughs> he, he could just say it like it was. Wow. It was very funny. Wow. Mm. Well, very, I love that. Very sweet. What? Uh, a grandfather's. A grandfather's. A grandfather, a grandfather, his son, and this, the, the dad, the, 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 the grandfather, his son, and his son is setting up his son to, to, to take another generation of... He's uh, trying to tell him about what, what it was like. So anyway, he was probably four and the little boy's three. He's not ready to, you know, get into scary stuff mm. like girls. Yeah, nothing scary about girls. <laughs> girls are the best thing on earth. <laughs> Thank you. We are. I think so. I think so. so <laughs> As we look into your eyes. You will. When, uh, w- whether it was, did did Batman, did the show, the couple of appearances there, did it have a, an effect on your career one way or the other in terms no. of? It, it, no. It, it, the most interesting fact is that it, it increased with popularity and interest and, uh, following and uh, you know, it was shown all over the world and now it's back in, in circulation again and it's on Hub TV and I, I get I used to get a little fan mail and now I get a lot. Really? A lot. Oh yes, yes, yes. So it's increased. It's more. It's nice to be immortal. I think it's safe to say that you have achieved that because of that show, if nothing, if nothing else, that certainly did it. You know what? It was just brilliantly written. Mm-hmm. Very witty, very much fun, very playful. It was, uh, it was just delicious. And there's something about the character that you didn't have to be all good. You know, who's all good? Nobody's all good. <laughs> You need bad in order to know what not to do. Mm-hmm. See, that's why when you touch the stove and it's turned on, <laughs> you don't do that again. Right. So, well, I'll let you finish it. All right. Well, let me ask you this. I'm told that you get asked a lot about your appearance on Star Trek, one episode, and that the Star Trek fans are just pretty pretty constant. Well, Star Trek is huge. I don't think it had anything to do with me. No. Mm-mm. It's, it's huge. It's a huge concept. It's a huge idea. It's a great... It's about our future. It's about us as human beings and where we're going, the more and better. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, your imagination just takes off. and I mean, look what's happening on Mars. I mean, doesn't that excite you? I mean, you look out and you see all the little rocks there and say, wow, what are we going to find out? And what's going to happen? Is there life? Is there not? What's it like? You know, oh, I mean, you see the clarity of those photographs. I'm just amazed. It, it is pretty incredible. Mm. What, uh, you know, as you think back to, uh, you know, I, obviously fans think of Batman, they th- the they look at Star Trek. They look at the, the monkeys, uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and you know, depending on where they were in their lives, w- where they they ran into you, they remember you for a certain thing. What are the highlights as you look back to your career? What are the the, the, the TV shows or the movies or the moments that really you know that you always come back to? Well, it's kind of interesting. They brought back a show that I did before Batman, before I did Catwoman, and it was in black and white. And black and white photography is really beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of, you look better. It's uh, all this high depth is kind of scary sometimes. But the show was called My Living Doll. Mm. And in this show, I was a robot. But let's say I was the ideal woman or the perfect woman. or the, So man creates the ideal woman and she comes alive and... They hire somebody, and uh, um, she has an IQ of 180 or 60 or 5 or something, and I had to memorize a lot of things. But it was a wonderful, wonderful show, and it's worth looking at again. It's called My Living Doll. You could probably get it on Amazon, where you get everything these days. 
Where you can get my book. <laughs> the Conscious Catwoman. That's pushy. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mm. We'll, and we'll make sure that people can click on it from the website and that they can order it from the website. Oh, it's on my website, julienumar.com. All right. Come see me. Come visit me. We'll do that. All that uh, amazes me. What stuff goes on Facebook. Ooh, you, that's so much fun. Yeah, I, I, and, and people should know, I, I was going to ask you about this later, but uh, that you are on Facebook and that you're, you're very, very active there. You seem to enjoy it. I do, I do. I, what am I going to do with all those pictures that have, that have accumulated over my lifetime? I just throw them up there and say something funny underneath and 500 people write back. I had a picture of me and my grandmother. Over 500 people liked it. And it's, it's amazing. Amazing. Oh, thank you, Steve Jobs. Thank you, everybody who ever created anything that I could push a button for. <laughs> And connect with people who have like-minded or don't like something, and they tell you right off the bat. And and um, oh, fabulous the world we live in. I saw that picture of you and your grandmother, and you, I think you said, under <laughs> it, "Yeah, you said uh, uh, grandmothers are so important." I think, or so special, oh, right? Oh yes, yeah. yes. And so many people just told me about their stories and their grandmothers or the grandparents that they didn't have. It's just, it's beautiful to instantly reach what's, what's important mm. in others. Um, yeah. Well, um, before we run out of time, I do want to ask you about the uh, California Women's Conference. Um, okay. You're going to be uh, uh, appearing there. Uh, how did you get involved in this? And they asked me. Good answer. And, uh, I love these conferences when you get to meet people and the energies that are there, and and the, you exchange ideas, and the, and it's just it's really um, it's a marketplace for ideas and and new concepts and. Um, you just never know what's going to happen. I think what is, is so great about life itself, really, is when you're open to the newness. What's happening? What's new? What's, what's online? Uh, what's taking place? What new ideas have come up? What new people are, are singing new songs? What, whatever it is, I'm always into jumping into what, in a sense, is new. It keeps you young. It's doing right by you. Yeah, don't don't fall back on, you know, all the past. Even though we've been talking about it for four minutes. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's a part of who you are, but you, you're obviously not uh, dwelling it's just, in it. It's just the road that leads you onward, mm -hmm. you know. It gets people to exchange ideas and and heartfelt feelings and uh, who I am kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful when someone comes up and is so, so genuine and says exactly what they're feeling, usually. Well, Empties. No. But it's good. It's good. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I want to. Well, let me ask you one more thing. And I know that the, the the women's conference is not a political event. Uh, are you at all concerned about women's issues at the moment? Do you do you you know venture into that type of thing? Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, I've been in every party associated: Democrat, Republican, uh, extreme this, anti-war that. Um, I've done been everywhere. It's kind of like really, I don't associate with parties or or anything like that. I kind of, I feel as if we're all on this boat. You know, and sometimes the ocean makes us lean this way. And so if you're smart, you run over to the, the high side of the boat because you want the boat to kind of go this way. So sometimes you have more Republican ideas and so. Quote, quote. And sometimes you have more liberal ideas. There's nothing wrong with anything. We need everything. 
it's important to hear everybody and to make up your own mind and just go where you know it's best for you. And it'll work out. And you'll see right away if that's not... Oh, we made some wrong decisions. I think all these wars have really corrupted uh, to some degree. But we'll survive it. We'll do better. We can. We know how. Yeah. Hmm. So politics? Got it. All right. Well, uh, folks, listen. Um, you can see actress Julie Newmar at the California Women's Conference at the Long Beach Convention me. Center. Sorry. Come to me. I want to see you. Come Please. say hello. Come mm. out. Turn out. Oh, uh, shit. By going up to someone that I think is important or I've admired, and I hang back and I hang back, and then you know, if weeks or years later, I think, oh, why didn't you have the courage to go and say hello? So come say hello. Say hello. Very good. And she'll be at the Long Beach Convention Center September 23rd and 24th. Uh, for more information about the event, I'm only there on the Monday. Oh, you're only only there on the first day then, the 23rd, I guess. I think it's. It's a Monday. Okay. That's the only time I'm there. But do come for the whole event because it will be of value to you, All I'm right. sure. No matter what, there will be surprises. It will be good. And you can get the full schedule. Correct Correct me if I'm wrong on the date. Uh, CaliforniaWomensConference.com mm -hmm. And also, uh, Ms. <coughs> Newmar has her own website. She mentioned it's JulieNewmar.com, I believe. Yes. Right. Uh, the second website it, it's julienumarwrites.com. So if you want to send me one of the, a story about your first love, your first fant well, I call it first fantasies. Just go to julienumarwrites.com, press the red button, and and send me a one-page story. Even if you're not a good writer, sometimes that works out too. And you can also follow her. Well, you can't. You can. You can see her on Facebook. She's maxed out the number of friends, but you can subscribe to her updates, so you can see what she's up to. She's just got too many friends. Big surprise. Oh. <laughs> I'll catch up with you though. All right. Well, <laughs> Julie Newmar, thank you so much. It's just been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Thank you. <laughs> we did it. That was good. That was good. I can't believe it. Yep. Oh my goodness. You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love from Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to, to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin, Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, The Tech Crunch Headlines, and The Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, Blackberry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. That's stitcher.com slash mrmedia. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party... 
please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. You can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening.